All right, folks, Tommy Cowett here, growing green on the lawn with you and in the park. And this is a athletic field facility in Stokesdale, North Carolina. And uh, as you can see, a little bit of discoloration here on the field. Well, somebody's been spraying. Where you see that light green, that's Bermuda grass. But, uh, and where you see this yellowing out, that's crab grass. Now, this uh, field has only received one treatment, but what I want to show you is an animal that is a real bear to control. It's this guy right here. This is called nut rush. It's scolaria. It's a type of sedge. And we don't know how it contaminated this field. This is a relatively new facility. Um, there's a uh, big soccer tournament scheduled to come out here in uh, November. And this field, at this current time, is condemned by the North Carolina Youth Soccer Association due to the clumping of the sedge. They don't want their referees out here tripping over these clumps. Now this is a very, very difficult to control weed. And uh, I've battled it with Roundup before. Now, you know, we're not going to kill this off. There's a lot of good Bermuda grass here. So our plan is three sedge removals and to make sure that our program works, we've been testing some products out here over the top of what we're already doing. I'll show you the plots. Um, a new product that I applied, and if you've seen some of my earlier videos, Growing Green likes to go out at two gallons of water per thousand square feet. That's roughly around 88 gallons per acre in the mix with the chemical to get good foliar coverage this is the new sedge hammer plus how sulfuron and i just put out two plots of that here this is the how sulfuron sedge hammer plus those two plots just applied today this was a plot if you could see the plot um this is 24d basically all that is is a uh, product called 3D, and you can see it discolored the Bermuda. But it really did smack that sedge pretty good. I'm not seeing anything, a few things that are a little happy here. But for the most part, I can pull this out of the ground. So the 24D is working. I just don't like the way it discolored. It's not killing the Bermuda, but it discolored it. This is the old sedge hammer formulation see my plots I don't know if you can see that not too much happy here as well in fact I'm pretty pleased with what I'm seeing here it's not coming out of the ground like it is on the uh you can see that discoloration in that one particular plot so this is how sulfuron sedge hammer without the surfactant in it this is a product called outrider which we thought might have some uh some good effect on it and it's very safe on Bermuda as you can see the Bermuda is really okay but I'm seeing a little too much happy here way too much happy in that sedge and then finally my good buddy Harry Kenny said hey go ahead and do dismiss dismiss is really good on nut sedge um too much happy too much happy I'm I can't pull that I can't I'm not seeing that same you know death so what we did is just to be on precaution or to try to tweak this program you know look at that 3d plot oh boy it, it smoked it really set that bermuda discolored it but man i tell you what scott reese my partner here he said yeah uh he thought early on that was doing the job now i'm liking what i'm seeing with the uh with the house off here on the, the the nut sedge control, the sedge hammer that we put out. You know, that was kind of the product of choice. And then we just put out two new plots of the uh, sedge hammer, as you can see. Now, this whole field did get a treatment of MSMA and uh, sedge hammer, the original. So this did get one application of that before um, across the board. A lot of this Bermuda looks pretty happy. 
Um, another issue with this field, I don't know if you can see it, reverse crown. Reverse crown, we got a low spot in the middle. So we are going to be deep tying and top dressing this field probably over the next three years each year with about an inch, inch and a half of sand down the middle between the, well, if it was a football field between the hashes. But we got to build this crown back up because look, water stands in what should be a crown. And I don't know if it's when they built this field, they may have brought in a lot of organic matter and it settled out. But as you can see, we got a reverse crown. Irrigation ran last night and we've got a reverse crown. We got water standing in the center of the field. So that's a no no. You can't have that. So anyway. Hopefully everything's going to work out here. Tommy Cowett on the lawn. We're going to kill the sedge off. We're going to deep tine, top dress everything. We're going to put this baby on a fertility program and get it to really go. And then we've got a big tournament coming up in November. We'll probably be overseeding this with ryegrass. So anyway, Tommy Cowett on the lawn with you and on the plots. Hope everybody's having a great one. Bye-bye. All right, folks, Tommy Cowett here. Here we are at Stokesdale Athletic Park, Stokesdale, North Carolina. This is where we're battling this nasty, nasty sedge. Scott Reese is operating this aerovator, and it is intended to really rip up the root system, break up some of this heavy, compacted clay. It's a native soil, as you can see. And this brown material you see I'm walking up on, that's the sedge we're battling. It's been treated with a herbicide. And I could show you a little bit of what he's doing to it with this machine. It's ripping it up quite a bit. We're really going after it. And we're damaging it to the best of our ability. Now this is an aerovator. Let's see if I can keep up with him. He's actually running at a slow speed. But if you want to see this articulating, what that does. Let's get close. little side to side action there. Of course he's missing the heads. Now let me show you what we're doing to this sedge is really putting a hurting on it. Best of our ability. It's really coming out of the ground and also we'll be able to get our herbicide to penetrate these heavy clumps of this material. This uh, this is a uh, Scalaria. It's also called nut rush. It's a type of rush. It almost seems like an aquatic plant. But uh, we're working on it with the aerovator. So we'll aerovate the entire field, then follow up with two more applications of the herbicide that we found to be working the best. We've already done one treatment. As you can see, that was a pretty powerful treatment. Took out a lot of the crabgrass out here. But uh, anywhere you see that darker brown, that's that sedge that we're after. And as I had mentioned in an earlier part of the uh, video, that uh, this clumping has caused a trip hazard here. We're also going to, as you can see what's happening here with the fertility going on, is the uh, as that sedge dies, the Bermuda will creep over. So we'll be doing some fertility applications out here as well. But you can see where this stuff is really thick. It's been here a while. It's rooted in real well. So we're working on it. All right, Tommy Cowett growing green on the field with you, with Scott Reese. And we'll check back with you at another time when we're further along in the process. All right, folks. All right, folks, Tommy Cowett here on the lawn with Growing Green. We're here in Stokesdale, North Carolina at Stokesdale Athletic Park. The athletic field specialists are back with you. And we're doing some deep tine aeration today. Scott's down there. 
We've got uh, some sand just delivered. Tomorrow we'll be top dressing the fields. He's going pretty deep. The fields are uh, pretty soft for what they are. They're native heavy clay. Uh, Scott is just running the wienerman down the, uh, the fields. And I'll show you how that machine works here in a moment. But just want to share that with you. We've got some really good, clean, top dress sand. And uh, we'll be getting, uh, like I said, 25 tons to the acre on that. But uh, just want to share this with you folks. Growing green on the lawn. Hope y'all are having a good one. Tine aeration. That hole. Going deep. Alright. Folks, Tommy here on the lawn. I didn't get to show you the top dress going down, but we uh, top dress the fields with sand. And as you can see, our holes filling up with sand for the most part. And, uh, little irrigation going here and we'll let that run now we've put about 25 tons to the acre on these fields and went a little heavy down the center uh, these fields had a, a reverse crown where uh, maybe it was organic matter or some type of settling in the center so the plan is, is that over the next three years of doing this every year, putting down about an inch, maybe even two inches is what's going down in a few places here on both fields, we'll be able to build that crown back up. And uh, deep tine aeration is wonderful for fracturing this soil that was really heavy, hard clay. If you see what we have on the outside here, we're also cleaning up this sedge. And it's going south. One more application to go, and you barely see any sedge out here anymore. But that was nut rush. It was a terrible, terrible weed problem. And uh, anyway, now the deep tine is done. It's been top dressed and fed, and these fields should really start to move. All right, folks. Tommy Cowett here, back on the lawn with you with Growing Green. If you need help with your uh, irrigation or your athletic fields, not really irrigation, so to speak, but uh, we'll help you with your timer. Um, give us a call, 880-336-8800-105 or 336-854-7999. Have a great one. It's Tommy Cowett here on the lawn, Stokesdale Athletic Park with Growing Green Athletic Field Specialist. And uh, today, we're seeding perennial ryegrass on some ball fields here that we've been working on. We've got the PhD brand, All Star, Top Hat, and Derby Extreme Perennial Ryegrass. Scott's out putting out the seed right now. I'm gonna show you that here in a moment. What we like to do is work the seed into the soil and get a little bit of con seed to soil contact. So we use this aerator. Now we don't actually turn on the tines. We just kind of let them run. There's a little roller here that acts sort of like a slit seeder in a way. And I'll show you the pattern that Scott's using. He's using a large Z sprayer spreader right now. Got a little bit of water running already. That's another key component to getting perennial ryegrass up and running. It's a good 82, 85 degree day here. But I'm going to show you these patterns here. This field was eaten up with a, a sedge. Scott ran uh, that machine. You see how the rollers make that little slit seed? And he went in two directions with the seed. 
two directions with the machine. As you can kind of see that. Now Scott's doing the same thing right now on that other ball field. He's gonna run in two directions with the seed and then two directions with the machine. See, we got some water running already. But I just want to show you one other thing on a side note. I put this in the ground just a moment ago. And it's my thermometer. It's a soil thermometer. And we're measuring above 80 degrees here still. So soil temperatures are still a little high. It's actually about 78 degrees. Um, a little high for doing um, spring dead spot control. We're going to be going out with uh, some um, a product from uh, Syngenta this year that's a mixture of Banner and Heritage and uh, should give us some good spring dead spot control this year. Last year we used Torque. But that's how Scott's putting out that seed, two directions. We go at about eight pounds per thousand square feet. That's a little over 300 pounds to the acre. Maybe closer to four. But just want to share this with you folks. We'll come back and show you the uh, finished results. All right. Tommy Cowett on the lawn with Growing Green signing out. Y'all have a great one. Folks, Tommy Cowett here on the lawn with Growing Green, and hey, we got some green going here. A little green machine. But yeah, it's been about a week since we seeded the fields here at Stokesdale Athletic Park. You can see that perennial ryegrass really coming in good. It's starting to get up. It's probably still at about one leaf stage for the most part starting to see a little bit of two leaf stage and I think we're gonna be relatively pleased with this might be some areas to touch up it's all said and done but very playable nice thing is that uh, terrible sedge is gone for the most part and you can see a couple places where they're practicing so they've been tearing some areas up but uh, that's what happens when you've got play going on at the same time you're trying to grow in but I think overall, we're going to be tournament ready here at Stokesdale Athletic Park. So Tommy Coward here on the lawn with you. I'm just going to sign on out for this episode of Overseeding Perennial Ryegrass on Athletic Fields.